Fly your fair nation. Fly your fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This episode is powered by Fly Fair Nation and recorded at the Fan Production House. It has been a while. Sorry for the wait. <laughs> so a lot has happened since I last recorded. Well, not even since not much has happened since, but leading up to the last few times that I recorded, there was a lot going on. I suck at dealing with sad stuff, death, depression, grief, all that, whatever. So, you know, by the time I finally was a little bit okay, then anxiety kicked in and I was like, oh my God, I can't do this, but you've been doing this, but I can't do this, whatever. Before I get into all my mess, I'm going to start this show off before I even like talk about like all the recap and my hot girl summer and all of that. I would like to say rest well I don't I wouldn't like to say but I'm going to say I'm not in any way pleased by this but I would like to say rest in peace to Terania Clark I'm not sure if it's Terania or Terania or maybe it's something else I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly but plum plum she was a part of the Jamaican football fraternity she was part of the reggae girls she was stabbed to death last weekend I it shouldn't have happened no like she was what 20 years old just 20 so I mean gone way too soon and over foolishness um I don't like the conversation that's been going on around this and despite why she was stabbed or who stabbed her or what the reason was behind her being stabbed or whatever I don't even think I've seen any reports from any official sources saying what happened after she was stabbed but if you follow Jamaican Twitter you get the gist of the story and anyone who believes that homophobia doesn't exist in Jamaica like you are out of your mind or if you believe homophobia doesn't exist anywhere you live in a very beautiful bubble and go you or you're just ignorant but regardless Rest in peace to Plum Plum. My condolences to her family and everyone that was affected by her passing. You know, this story scares me in so many different ways because let's say, for for example, right? I don't know what happened after the fact, but let's say the reason she's not here with us anymore is that she is a lesbian, okay? Let's say that that is the reason. Like, she got stabbed, whatever the reason was. She didn't get help because she's a lesbian. Um, the fact that it was visible that she dressed a little bit more masculine. She wasn't all the way, like, femme or whatever. She's masculine presenting, supposedly. These are these are the, the stories that we're hearing. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know her personally. Um, that That's scary for me and people that I know who are masculine presenting um you don't hear a lot about women experiencing like homophobia or like any you don't hear it often I'm not saying you don't hear it but you don't hear it often anywhere really especially in Jamaica you mostly hear about gay boys or gay men it's it's mostly about that's where the prejudice and hatred and all the violence and attack and all that stuff that's usually where it goes the distaste goes in the direction of men but those who are part of the community are aware that you know no matter male female non-binary the prejudice the bigotry it's it's there (laughs) regardless of like I said, any gender or whatever, you're a part of the um, community, you are aware in some light or way that it exists, whether it was directed at you, somebody you know, somebody who's somebody you know, like, it's not too far removed from you. As a woman, <laughs> I I hear the comments, I see the tweets, I see all the shit, and I'm just like, dog, I love my people so much, but at the same time, like, I cannot stand y'all. And I'm not just talking about Jamaican people. I'm talking about black people as a whole because there is so much, like, there's such little support for one another as a whole. Like, black people as a whole, we do not, we don't love each other the way we say we do. We really don't because... (sighs) There's so much shit that we put each other through that we turn around and collectively want to be mad at white people for being racist or treating us a certain way or stereotyping us or whatever the case is. But we don't show them much difference like in, in regard to how to treat us because like 
before we go out and support ourselves, each other, like whatever, we'll rather go buy from some white brand or something of the sort. Like we won't, <laughs> we don't uplift each other the way that we should. In all honesty, we really do not. And if you need me to sit here and explain this, you might be part of the problem. But that's not what this episode is supposed to be about. Um, just rest in peace to her. And like I said again, my condolences to her family. In the vein of other things that women and such, um, the past few weeks, the internet has been in an uproar because always the company that makes sanitary products for women decided that they're going to remove the female symbol from the pad wrapper. Now, <laughs> since what, 2003? Something so? I've been using, well, I don't use always anymore, but... From them time, I was using always up until probably like last year or the year before. Um, and I never noticed that there was a female symbol on the wrapper. I don't know if many people realized that there was a female symbol on the wrapper before this news came out that they were going to remove it. Now, I really hate the conversation about how removing the symbol is removing female identity. <laughs> Like, I'm, it's taking away from women. I don't, I personally don't understand the conversation. I don't understand how it correlates. I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Because me, I mean, if somebody can explain it to me, by all means, like, explain it to me. Like, l at, honestly, make it make sense. Because I don't understand. How does a symbol on a wrapper for sanitary napkins take away from all that woman had to fight for to get to where we are now and in all honesty where the fuck are we like <laughs> what Th that's what that's the hill you want to choose like that's this is where you want to start like seriously now my thing about it is not just cisgendered women use it and everybody's saying oh men don't use it whatever whatever you want to erase trans men from the equation and say oh they're still women okay buddy whatever that's your ignorance talking but outside of trans women trans not trans women, someone asked me if trans women use it no trans women don't use them but outside of trans men using them what about people who don't identify as one specific gender like what about non-binary people not non-binary non-binary people what about gender fluid people who today might identify as male tomorrow might not identify as anything might identify as something else tomorrow those people their feelings are also valid it's not about erasing women because at the end of the day y'all still gonna buy them like I don't nobody is stopping you from buying it so I don't I don't understand the distaste for them removing it and if y'all gonna stop buying always because of this then go you I mean I'm pretty sure always is not gonna hurt that much from your bigoted bucks not supporting them you get me like whatever now i'm just waiting for them to come out with cotton on um panty liners um and i'll be good because i've been buying this other brand and it's okay but i'm one of those people that i go by brand like if i started out using something and it didn't do nothing wrong to me i want to keep using it because that is a brand that works for me that's like me with shooting like canon 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 but and then also when i started using tampons it was tampax all the way through um, I saw recently that Tampax is actually, um, on the, what is it? The healthy train, <laughs> the organic train. They also have organic tampons now. It's like Tampax Pure or something like that. I'm just expensive. And it's just further proves that society is trying to eradicate poor people. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny, but it's not funny. And another point to that is this, this Popeye's chicken that has found its way back on the market i i don't understand how they're making so much of it i really don't because first of all florida alone be having lines wrapped well the first time it came out wrapped around the block from 
like down the street around the corner wrapped and they sold out okay cool and now what a month later maybe two months later i don't even know how long but it it ain't been that long it's not enough time for them to raise more chicken to put out the amount of chicken that they're they're selling it's and then on top of that they also doing the regular chicken sales like i don't steroids hormones not real chicken i you know the the possibilities are endless these companies have access to so much especially with all the money that they have that who knows what they're actually feeding us they have things that can replicate you know the cynic in me wants to say that they are feeding us like, you know, like the morning star crumbles, <laughs> the things that look like meat, but they're not, but it's healthy, like vegan vegetables or whatever, like flour and whatever they mix it up with, whatever seasoning so that it looks and tastes like chicken or whatever. Part of me wants to say that that's what they're feeding us. But the other part of me doesn't think that these corporations care enough about our health to be giving us healthy alternatives to fried chicken. So there's that because the market is geared towards black people. Okay, let me not start that. <laughs> let me not start that. But yeah, so I just feel like that's all that crap is fake. I don't I haven't tried it. I don't plan on trying it. I don't Oh, I know one person that tried it, I think, that has told me that they tried it. I don't think I know anybody that has, you know, been avidly trying to get a taste of this chicken. And I'm I'm OK with that because I I like my friends. <laughs> I like my friends and it would be nice if, you know, they don't grow extra limbs or, you know, just whatever. Um, it's funny. A producer said to me the other day, you're going to see one of those commercials in like 10 years that says if you ate Popeye's chicken um, chicken sandwich in 2019, you may be at risk for blah, blah, blah. Call us not a fire lawsuit. And. Even though I'm here laughing, I think that will actually happen. I will not be surprised if that happened. So, yeah, good luck with that. I don't know how I started talking about Popeye's chicken. How did I end up on this subject? Oh, we're talking about organic stuff. Oh, tampons, always. There we go. All right, back at it. <laughs> so um, I did a poll. Well, not a poll, but I did a um, question and answer thing regarding this on my page. And a couple of people responded. I'm going to share some of the results because... Some people genuinely do not know any better. Like, I say ignorant, and some people take it as offense. I don't mean ignorant in a negative way. It's I'm using it in the exact definition of the word. It is, you know, to not have knowledge. Whether it's willful ignorance or you just weren't presented with the information, that's on you. But in this day and age, I feel like everybody is willfully ignorant because you're glued to your mobile device always on wi-fi so if you don't know something you can always just google it but you don't care enough and i, I understand <laughs> i understand i have learned about myself a lot since i did this podcast i tweeted this the other day that back in the day i would be quick to just cut somebody out and tell them you're stupid shut up <laughs> uh, since i've started this podcast and the questions that i've been presented with and the conversations that i've had since i've had this podcast because now it seems like even before this, like people would come to me and ask me questions about like LGBT and women's rights and femininity, sex, like things like that, like the things that I talk about. And I would get questions about these things and I'd talk to people about it. And of course, in the midst of these questions, because most likely it's usually on Twitter, or Instagram or something like that, Snapchat. And in the midst, there would be some troll or somebody who genuinely didn't know or somebody who was just bored and had nothing better to do, whatever who would find their way into contact with me and would just, I guess, try to antagonize me. But I've learned to not let people on the internet <laughs> work me up. Like, at most, you can get me to laugh. I'd be like, oh, this bitch dumb, and then carry on with my life. Like, I don't get upset over the things on the internet. I don't get upset over the things people say to me or about me on the internet because it is purely entertainment for me. This podcast this all the pages associated with the podcast I try to make them educational 
like to bring information to people informational informational is that a word I don't know but try to make it so that people can come to me and ask questions and have conversations about things that matter have real conversations and not just be a drag fest now my regular page you can get dragged all day like I don't have (laughs) I don't care (laughs) you come in my inbox on some bullshit I might tell you figure suck out to mama all but you know that's 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 what comes with it especially if like you're poking you know I don't like people like just purposely being an ass so with that being said I've been presented with some some ideas some mind frames surrounding always removing the pan um the panty (laughs) um removing the female symbol from the rappers and I just wanted to know like how do people really feel about this like are people really bothered I the question is geared to women of course because men (laughs) half of them don't even know the difference between a tampon well cisgendered men anyway know the difference between a tampon and uh, um pad penny liner so it or menstrual cup diaphragm etc so it definitely wasn't geared towards any cisgendered male um trans men were also welcome to ask answer the question I don't believe any did jump in here. I do have some responses from some non-binary um, folks, some women, cisgendered women. Um, so I'm going to read a couple of them. Someone said that they had no idea that transgenders menstruate. Okay. I personally, I'm not one to be all like, oh my, actually, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to answer the question, but transgender men are capable of menstruation because they're transitioning from woman to man now not everyone has the resource or access to resources to get the proper hormones testosterone whatever treatment that you need to ensure that you know you don't experience menstruation um they yeah there's so some of them do menstruate if you did not know trans men some of them do menstruate some of them don't because they've gotten to a stage thankfully for them where they can afford to or have been afforded the luxury of getting rid of that whole nuisance that everyone who experiences hates nobody likes getting their period so whether you're doing it because you're transitioning or whatever the case is why whatever whatever periods suck (laughs) even for people who don't like go through all the worst of the symptoms of menstruation like it sucks regardless like you're bleeding out your vag like it's not okay so then someone said they're trying to be inclusive in the end we all know it's a woman's product somebody with some sense yay someone said i don't mind i like that their growth um of acceptance towards our community yes i have always said that any product that markets towards a marginalized group of people it's either you truly support them or you're looking at it as it's money like people are going to support you because you support them and that is common sense that is business that is marketing so i mean whatever the reason is why they're doing it i i don't really not say i don't care because i do care exploitation isn't cool but at the same time until I hear something coming from anywhere saying that always and their owners and supporters don't care about whatever whatever I mean hey go you get your dollar if that means making a product that makes someone comfortable when they pick it up why would I be upset about that you know what I'm saying and that's the thing that that's this is my view on it right like I said I did not notice that the symbol was on there to begin with and I'm not gonna go buy a box of pads to find out because I don't wear pads so I am indifferent to them removing the label because one I didn't know it was there two it does not affect me and even if I did still wear pads they're not changing the pads themselves they're not changing the product they're changing the wrapper how many times do products renew their packaging like what is the issue? They changed the box. They changed the color. Since I started using um, feminine products, sanitary products, I have seen these boxes change so much. You know what I'm saying? Like they add different lines. They have always Serenity now and always like all these other brands, like sub brands for the same product. It's all the same shit. They just 
market it differently. Some people have super, super light periods and they might need the freaking panty liner looking pads that are like super, super thin. Whereas some people have a super heavy flow and they need like the heavy, you know what I'm saying? Like the overnight ones or the super plus. I personally, thankfully, we knock on wood, have never needed a super plus for anything. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why people are so worked up about this. And people are doing the absolute most. Talking about this, like, erasing womanhood. And I'm just like, how? I really want someone who feels like this to tell me how it is that it's erasing our womanhood. How does this erase us and I really don't like that like members of the LGBT community are saying this also like I saw a comment I can't remember whose page it was on where somebody was like oh I'm LGBT too so don't even I'm like what we are the most homophobic within the community we are the most transphobic within the community biphobic like what you can't use that as an argument for like come on oh i support trans people but no (laughs) there is no but it's either you do or you don't what you want them to make another product specifically for trans people why it's the same shit and you don't you don't want to have to go somewhere else to get something that you've been using for as long like it's the one comfort you can get from this experience you're having a period every month or however often it is that you're having it something that you've been doing for since the beginning of your cycle is using these products that little bit of comfort even though it's mindless to most people because like oh i just buy this whatever whatever to not have to stop and think okay since i'm transitioning i have to go buy the other kind you don't have to you can still use the one but why not just use your pads and go <laughs> like just use your pads and go just use them and go because it's not that serious it's really not they took it off big whoop you gonna stop using them okay they already took it off bye like i i went in like this whole like i went on a whole i wrote a paragraph to somebody about this but i ended it because i ended it with because this woman want to have something I think that's really where it comes in because the whole, oh, we're being erased and women have fought so long for our rights and now you're going to take away da 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 da. And it's like, why should we add more discomfort to them? Right? Why should we add more discomfort to them? Because cisgendered women want to have something? Seriously? What you want to have is continued separation from the trans community. And that's where the problem lies, in all honesty. Mm. I just, I don't like people try to make excuses, especially when they don't make sense. I don't like excuses, first and foremost. I don't like excuses. But I don't like when people don't think through what they're saying to be an asshole. Like, you're just being an asshole to be an asshole because it sounds good in your head. Like, that's, that's not cool at all (laughs) like whatever but yeah anyways um love yourself use cotton products (laughs) off the subject of always use cotton products use organic products if you don't feel comfortable using menstrual cups i'm always telling people use menstrual cups but if you don't feel comfortable using menstrual cups use cotton because the chemicals that are in there why if you can get a cotton product a completely organic product in comparison to something else that has chemicals that you can't even pronounce and they both do the same thing why would you get the one that has the chemicals because it's cheaper cheaper doesn't mean better not saying expensive means better but you know cotton you can you know what cotton looks like you know that like you're saying you know what cotton is you don't know what these things and these you know i'm saying like you don't know what these things are and i can understand using them and not knowing better and not knowing that cotton is out there because I myself am guilty of that. Like before I started, you know, looking into these things, I was using the shit that my mama told me to use. And then I thought about it. What did her mama use? What did hers use? Because women have been having their cycles for ever, (laughs) you know? So 
these chemicals were not always around. These chemicals were invented. And of course, if they're making it at the rate that they're making it and they're able to charge the prices that they're charging, it's not that expensive to make them. So it's cheaper. You can put out more. You can get more money from it. Yes, cotton is more expensive. But, you know, a bag of spinach is more expensive than a bag of fries. So y'all can do the math on that (laughs) you know what i'm saying healthier is usually more expensive but it's your health it's healthier on the front end i'd rather it be healthier on the front end front (laughs) wow i can't talk (laughs) i'd rather be healthier on the front end than on the back end when you know i have whatever the hell issues that comes from the gel in these things that we're putting in our bodies and right there by our one of our most sensitive areas like I don't I'm actually thinking about trying out tampons like the cotton tampons because I'm a tampon girl I like tampons not everyone is open to tampons and if y'all need instructions on how to properly put in tampons because you feel them when you put them in and that's why you hate them hit me up I have done many a uh, uh, tutorial on how to properly insert a tampon so that you don't feel it and you don't hate it and you well, girl to love it. Just hopefully you don't forget that it's in there because toxic shock syndrome, I've heard, is a real thing. So, yeah, take care of yourselves. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, use use products that are safe for you and your body. I mean, I use Soft Cup. I'm dropping a lot of brands in this episode. Jesus, somebody call me. But I use Soft Cup, the disposable ones, because I have not gotten to the point where i'm comfortable with getting a diva cup just yet i'm i mean if you're comfortable with the idea go right ahead and get a diva cup but i like the idea of just throwing it away when i'm done that's me personally um boiling it and all that i know how heat works i just you know they're latex for anyone questioning or wondering um for those who are learning to latex that no i'm sorry is it latex or is it silicone i gotta look at the box don't quote me retract in that statement either way there's no chemicals it just catches the fluid you dump it out carry on with your day that's really what it is um for those who don't know what menstrual cups are you are free to look it up (laughs) um oh something funny that i ran into the other day i was in trader joe's with my brother and (laughs) there was this bread that they called like the bible bread or something like that where is it um yeah the bible bread ezekiel 4 9 now me with my bible app on my phone right i was like what do you mean the bible bread what what is this and i decided to go look up this bible bread because i likes to google (laughs) and when i did my googles google told me that this is really molded after the bible like the bread is molded after a uh, specific scripture, Ezekiel 4, verse 9, um, which is what's stamped on the bread. They don't have the actual scripture. They just have, you know, the book and verse and whatever. And it says in verse 9, also, take of yourself wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. Put them into one vessel and make bread of them for yourself. During the number of days that you lie on your side, 390 days, you shall eat it. Now, me being me, I was like, nah, they ain't do that. Bruh, I checked the ingredients and it has organic sprouted wheat, filtered water, organic sprouted barley, organic sprouted millet, or organic malted barley, uh, lentils, soybean, spelt, yeast, gluten, salt, organic sesame seeds. Now, we can go back to what this says and it says what wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. All of these are in the bread. Now, to me personally, the bread looked tough. It looked like it dry and I'm going to need to butter it (laughs) in order to enjoy it. I did not purchase this bread. It just caught my eye because it said Ezekiel 4.9. And I was like, wait, 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 what is this? But I, (laughs) it tickled me because, you know, they are catering to every aspect of the whole, like living a healthier life. And I, I like that. You know what I'm saying? I I like where 
we are currently like this climate of being healthier and i can admit that i'm falling victim to this because i bought some organic deodorant the other day <laughs> um and i've al- always used like organic soap here and there like not religiously but i've had my brushes with really, like i buy organic soap whenever i see someone who makes them you know supporting people and also i feel that these like my skin my body like <sighs> it should be taken care of like I I think back to like how I grew up like the beginning of my being where everything was damn near natural like my father has a farm like we had fruits and vegetables and things that were grown on his farm or a neighboring farm that they traded with coffee or whatever it is and that's what I ate like you know my pumpkin my yam banana all of that stuff was from a farm that I could go to if I wanted to like I know this farm this farmer knows me you know so coming here and like all the things dog I eat some crap and it's not even just me like the things that they make easily accessible are not the things that you should be consuming especially at the rate at which we consume them I was reading something and someone was saying that the amount of food we're supposed to eat per day is the size of your fist and I'm sitting here like hmm. so that's like half a banana <laughs> and like you know maybe like some nuts and you know some cooked spinach because cooked spinach is the most deceptive whore alive like spinach pisses me off <laughs> especially cooking spinach because you have a pot full of spinach to start and by the time you're done it's too shrivel up piece of green something and I kind of like excuse me what happened to the rest of my food the deception like Jesus <laughs> such a hack kind of like this foolishness I read about T.I. going with his 18 year old daughter to the gynecologist to make sure that her hymen is still intact excuse me you're doing what now? Not to make sure that she's healthy and everything is fine, but specifically to check that her hymen is still there. I'm glad the doctor told him that, you know, the hymen can be broken many different ways other than just having sex. And maybe sis is out here getting ahead. I don't want to think about no children doing that, but I know I did not lose my virginity <laughs> after 18. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like whether it was at 18 or before, that's none of y'all business, but it was not... 1921 how how invasive instead of letting her mother go like he you know i read i read the tweet about it and i was like this might be okay ti she reveals that he goes to the gynecologist every year with his daughter i was like oh that's sweet because i'm the type of person like i hate gynecology visit like I hate going to that place. I hate it. Kind of like the dentist. It's very invasive. It's very uncomfortable. I don't know you. And you're all in my parts. Like, all in there. Like, you spread it open and shine a light in that bitch. Like, there is no more invasive (laughs) than that. You know what I'm saying? Well, there are other things, but you get the gist, right? And I'm thinking he's going there to, you know, comfort her. Be a good dad. Learn something. This man goes to ensure that her hymen is still intact like excuse me but and if it's broken then what it's already gone like what i don't and then goes on to say in the interview that who wants a virgin all that work like what i don't i really dislike men sometimes cisgender men like they mm, 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 mm. There's something really wrong with this world. (laughs) And I saw a shirt that said, there's more wrong with this world than, what is it? Boys who kiss boys and girls who kiss girls or something like that. Boys who like boys. Something to that extent. Like, there's more wrong in the world than that. Like, basically, mind your fucking business and carry on. Um, Do I have any good news? Oh, (laughs) I saw something that tickled me the other day. Sean Paul who I did not know his name was Ryan Francis, Ryan Enriquez. I didn't, I know he was Puerto Rican and Jamaican or something like that, but I didn't know he had like a Spanish last name. But anyways, he got, um, what is it? National Heroes Day Award for contributing to the global popularity and promotion of reggae music. A part of me wanted to be upset about it, but I was like, no, 
thinking about it for real, for real, like, he really was, like, the, the, he still is in so many parties. I'm about to get upset. Like, when you think about it, when they play the reggae segment, they always play some Sean Paul. They always, they never forget Sean Paul. Give me the light. Like, they, <laughs> somebody go cuss me for that one. But they never forget Sean Paul because in America, he was the he was the sound of reggae to them like he was the sound of dancehall to them so outside of bob marley like he was the sound of reggae you know what i'm saying and as far as dancehall goes it was him you know and then you know elephant man snuck in a little bit with little john but sean paul was it for a while and he had son and he was someone yeah he got a song with beyonce too like you know he was out here doing his thing so i mean shout out to him for getting that award congratulations or whatever you know go you um other things that i've been seeing on the internet this <laughs> this post about you know my boyfriend is so loyal he don't watch porn that have females in it oh the amount of responses i got when i posted this one i'd be posting things just to see what people think and say and i'd be dying because y'all are so funny like <laughs> someone says sis your man is a body man i was like oops now this is this is a lesbian that said it you know we gotta let people know because some people are still offended by the term body man just like people are offended by the term faggot and dyke but people within the community still use it freely i have to say this every time i know but Oh, speaking of, speaking of, so carnival passed, right? I'm going to talk about carnival in another episode and my summer and all that, but carnival was a month ago or something like that, um, Miami carnival, um, a couple weeks ago and team Dutty had a party for those who don't know team Dutty, uh, puts on queer Caribbean events. So LGBTQ inclusive, friendly uh, Caribbean parties, dance hall, soca, all the things that you need from a party where you can be yourself. Like basically a party for this podcast. <laughs> That's what I call it. I always say it's a pointless talks party because yes, they cater to all of that. It is a safe space. There are many closeted folks who attend these parties, which is why I'm not going to say any names, but I saw a lot of people from yard and foreign at these parties or at this party and i was like oh so you know that you're gay okay cool because a lot of the times i see people doing things and i'm like does he know that he's gay does she know that she's gay do they know that they're gay because my darby going the fuck off and i'd be like i really wonder if they know and people are like, oh, how can you say that somebody don't know they're gay? It's possible. I know somebody who literally just came out earlier this year. Well, not even just came out. She came out like a couple months ago, but she just realized, accepted, admitted, whatever the term is, that she's a lesbian, like February of this year, February 2019. We are in November 2019 now. Um, she realized that she's a lesbian not even bisexual she never claimed bisexual or anything of that nature like she's never thought she was curious or anything people have always came to her about you know her sexuality because she's a tomboy but she's never identified as any part of the lgbtq community but up until this year i don't know what happened i did not get the details sorry no tea no shade she accepted within herself that she's a lesbian and she came out a few months later like she went through her whole oh my gosh is this really happening thing like you know she went through her whole thing and she came to terms with it and now she's living her happy gay ass life so don't come at me sideways when I say do they know that they're gay so anyways back to what I was saying I met team Dutty party minding my business in a corner with cat and you know pre on the scene and I looked to my left and I see oh I look to my right and I see oh and when I say my little gay ass heart just filled with so much joy I was like yes babies yes because I follow so many people on Instagram and Twitter right and I'd be like y'all don't post nothing gay granted it's nobody's business I am a firm believer in your business is your business not for everybody to know and I understand when you are a brand that you don't need to advertise things that 
people aren't still aren't comfortable with in 2019 like homosexuality is not something that everyone is comfortable with especially if you're caribbean and being caribbean i completely understand being in the closet so don't think i'm trying to tell nobody to come out it's that's your business but the fact that they know that they're gay was enough for me because i saw i was like yes baby i'd be hyped i'm sorry i'd be so hyped when people like know who they are I'd be so hyped. I don't even care if anybody else knows who you are. If you know who you are, you truly know who you are and you living in your truth. Hell yeah. Like, fuck that. Get these white man's coins. Get these Caribbean coins. Get whatever coins you need to get if you got to put on the front. But at the end of the day, when you come home, you know who you are. Shit. I'm here for all of it. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but um, yeah, y'all rude. Y'all really came out here talking about that girl. Boyfriend is a Batman because he watch, um porn with no females in it but maybe he likes fur fur stuff you know they do do like you know anyways uh i want to end this off by saying that (sighs) y'all need to stop believing everything y'all see on the internet because based on this astrological signs ranked by who is most difficult to love foolishness i heard that there was quite a few of them going around now I'm in and out on the internet sometimes. Sometimes I just take mental health days and I just don't go on the internet at all. I I be playing video games. But like I be playing like solitaire and like things that make me think like 2048 and um it's like Tetris but it's not Tetris. It's Cube Cube. I don't know, whatever. But I be playing games that like make me think, you know? So I saw the only one that I've heard of said that cancer is the least difficult to love so basically if you're a cancer you're easy to love um but this one that i saw it said the most difficult sign to love is virgo (laughs) and when i say i had all the jokes for this because i have some virgo friends like i really love virgos like virgos are but i've never dated have i dated a virgo hold on let me think i don't think Oh, oh, I was involved with a Virgo. I was involved <clears throat> with a Virgo at some point or another. It wasn't hard for me to, you know, but then again, they said that I love bad treatment. So that's probably why, you know, mm, story for next time. But apparently Virgo is the most difficult to love. Then comes Scorpio. Then comes Sagittarius. Now, I would like for y'all to know that my first love was a Scorpio. And I have a very deep affliction for Sagittarius. <laughs> I apparently just don't like to have nice things because I dated one cancer ever in my life. And I will never, I have said this time and time again, that I will never date another cancer ever in my life. So I have concluded that I don't like to be happy. <laughs> but based on this based on this reading because i'm sitting here and i'm like okay virgo scorpio sagittarius aquarius like what these are like when i think about like my involvements with people like they up there right like they up there and then it's like i keep going through the list capricorn i'm not commenting on that uh gemini leo aries taurus libra pisces cancer what now, out of all of these signs, right, the only sign that I can say, like, has been, like, drawn to me in a way that makes me feel like, yo, this motherfucker got me. Like, no matter what I do, like, they're going to be there for me. Like, they're going to love me. They're going to take care of me. Like, me personally, I've always said that Aries are drawn to me in, like, an almost obsessive way. Like, the Aries that I can remember dating have always, like, made an effort like a noticeable effort to please me or to like be seen by me you know and that's important that's important but that's just something that I've always said like Aries always be drawn to me like always always I think about like in college there was this girl that like I don't even know how we met to be honest and she used to just always be like yo what's up and I'd be like girl <laughs> chill <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it's just different little interactions like things that I've noticed I've always been like oh you're an Aries okay it makes sense all right cool like even and not even just as like romantic or intimate relationship like even as friends like there was a friend of like an ex that was an Aries and he when I said this nigga treated me like I was his little sister like to this day 
if he sees me, he's like, damn, sis, you good? You need anything? Da, da, da. But then again, someone always told me that, you know, real recognize real. So could be that because he was cool as shit. But yeah. And then um, Taurus, Libra, Pisces. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever dated a Pisces. I'm not going to go through all the signs. Don't. I haven't dated 12 people. Leave me alone. <laughs> but um, yeah, Cancer, though. Cancer the easiest to love <laughs> i be talking shit saying that that's why y'all love me so much but child child okay y'all want to go based on that we're just gonna leave that there so yeah this episode i basically talked about nothing i'm not i'm not saying that i talked about a little bit of everything i will be back shortly it will not be another pff, what three four months before y'all get another episode I'm serious, y'all can't, don't hold your breath. I wasn't going to say you can hold your breath, but don't hold your breath because it's not going to come out in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for everyone who has been hitting me up and trying to get in contact with me, batting me up for my new episodes, telling me that, you know, I need to get my shit together and I need to knock myself out of this funk and use this as a way to cope with whatever I'm going through and etc it's easier said than done and in all honesty this does help me with my own shit um I hope that it helps someone else as well I I feel like one day I might get to the point where I journal my actual feelings like the shit that I'd be going through through this I don't know maybe I will I don't know I, I play with the idea a lot um I feel like it might it it might help someone it might some help someone who's going through something similar to see that you know these things you're not crazy and in a sense like you're not crazy i listen to a slew of different shows where i can relate to the toxic traits in the people <laughs> on the show and i see myself a lot in um kid fury and crystal honest to god because the way I treat myself <laughs> is like I'm trash to myself as a whole, but I'm aware and I'm working on it, you know, so I'm trying to make strides in a positive direction, um, starting with, you know, little things like organic deodorant and organic feminine products and things like that. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, I bought an um, organic toothbrush. It was it's bamboo. I'm, I have this weird like. I don't know what to call it. I have this weird fascination with bamboo. I don't know what. I think it's because bamboo used to grow in my backyard. yard. I don't know. But I like bamboo. I like the image of it. I like the way it looks. Like, you know, like the stalks, how they're like. Yeah. Anyways. But the toothbrush is bamboo and like charcoal. I need to figure out what the bristles are made of. I forgot to check that part. Because last I checked, I thought that was from like pig hair or some shit like that. Like, I don't. I don't know. But yeah. Anyways. It's supposedly um, organic. I just bought it because it was cute and it was cheap. So, yeah, you know, I'm trying to do the whole, you know, yeah. Don't don't think I'm going to stop wearing perfume, though. I don't think I'm going to stop doing that because um, <clears throat> I do wear body oils. That's <laughs> something natural that I do as far as fragrance goes. But I... I'm making strides. I feel like I'm t I'm slowly but surely turning into the stereotype that people think I am. Like when they see me for the first time and especially when my hair is wrapped up and I look like real Afrocentric or whatever the fuck image, you know, very homely and mother Africa or whatever the fuck they be saying, like whatever. I feel like slowly but surely as age um, creeps up on me, I find myself doing things and be like yo that's some real naturalistic <laughs> as shit but you know whatever um i have so much more to say so before i start rambling way too much i'm gonna just close this out here we'll do a whole other episode shortly after this y'all can stay tuned and catch me on the next one i want to thank everyone for checking this episode out um, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough to the people who have been checking on me in these months. And, you know, the people who have checked on me and have let me live with not dropping an episode. Thank you to those as well as the ones who have been verbally abusing me to drop new episodes. I appreciate all of you. Um, I'm still collecting poetry. Oh, shit. Yo, I'm gonna drop a poem right now. Right now, right now. 
actually no no i'm not no i'm not i'm sorry <laughs> the next episode i'm gonna drop a poem because i did get some poem submissions i'm about to tell y'all to drop poems i'm like oh shit i just remembered somebody did drop a poem um so yeah if you have any poetry or short stories that you want to share or have read on the show please feel free to submit them to ask pointless at gmail.com i um received a few questions in my inbox also and i was like oh shit y'all asking me questions for real so i'll read those um later actually i think i might have written back to somebody and was like yo i don't know if you want me to answer this on the show but here's some info but there's that um don't forget to listen like share and subscribe to the pointless talks podcast we are available on uh, the platforms we are available on um for those who have not been here in a while who forgot or who want another option to listen to the show somewhere else we are available on tune in radio apple Podcasts, soundcloud google play music iHeartRadio, radio as well as spotify you can check us out on all the social media outlets we're on facebook there's a page you can go like it um the youtube i <laughs> i added another video the other day you guys should be proud um i'm on twitter talking all the shit on my personal page but definitely follow me on pointless talks as well on twitter i am also on instagram for the most part you can follow me there as well it's pointless talks on everything p-o-i-n-t-l-e-s-s-s-t-a-l-k-s it's literally type me in on google bitch but um it's the same thing on everything like on all the platforms all across the board it's pointless talks there's no extra letters or extra characters it's spelled as is the only difference in the spelling is there's three s's for emphasis as opposed to just two um yeah, if you like us, rate us, give us five stars. Keep on a bad man feelings them to yourself. Just see and know a bad man people will never prosper. Just all on to it, okay? But if you have good feelings and all them something there, drop it in the comment box. Let us know how you think, what you feel, etc. I think I stretched that. It's supposed to be what you think, how you feel. <gasps> Regardless, whatever. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you want to hear. All of that. Um, And just like every other episode whether you got here on purpose or by fate. Thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast.